Hey guys, what's up? So I'm going to do my Q&A answers um, to all the questions you guys sent on both um, my posts on Instagram and on Facebook. So I'm just going to go and answer a couple few of these questions. And first off, thank you guys for all the support. You guys are amazing. So much questions, really, really good ones. Um, so I'm going to get started with probably the Instagram ones. So um, let's check here. Um, RJ Urbano, what was your main game plan going into the competition um, in terms of preparing yourself for the challenges you think you might face? Um, there's really no game plan to Top Chef Canada because you don't know what you're going to face. So um, you can't really prepare a recipe or anything like that. For me, it was more of being able to make sure that I'm going to go into uh, Top Chef and be as versatile as I can so that whatever they throw at me that I'll be able to um, make something out of it. Um, Jay Chong's, who would win a pose down? You or Chef McEwen? <laughs> um, definitely Mc Chef McEwen. Have you seen him? Um, he wins a pose down in regards to style, in regards to class, culinary ex experience. Yep, definitely Chef Mark McEwen. He wins the pose down, hands down. Um, let's see here. Instatran, on the first day, who did you think was your biggest threat? All right, so honestly, when I walked in that day, the fr the person that I was like really scared was Takashi. And the reason that I was scared of Takashi was that the guy's A, Japanese. Um, I highly respect Japanese individuals and Japanese culture, and they just take things to another level. So I already knew from there that I was like, this is going to be crazy. And then he tells me that he's the partner uh, with uh, Chef Antonio Park for, you know, Lavenderia, for Park Restaurant, all these places. And I'm just like, this guy is probably like going to take his sushi knives and just real quick ninja status, take us all out one at a time. Um, so yeah, definitely Takashi. Uh, next one, let's see. Um, so a couple people asked this question and it was really like, do I already know what the challenges will be or did they tell me of the challenges or tell any of the contestants before we get in there? And the answer is nope. We know nothing at all. We literally go there, they tell us what we're doing, um, the challenge for the day, they give us a time, and they give us a budget and boom, that's it. And then we get going. So this is as real as it gets and I guess I'm going to answer this question because a lot of you guys ask also which is um, do we know um, exactly what the ingredients will be or what kind of challenges there are and once again no everything that you see that is live cooking um, it's real time there's no faking it the clock is going and that's it so it's real cooking it's not it's not you know magic TV boom television magic um, let's see, what's next? Um, Pre-game routine. Something that I can't consistently do before every competition or challenge. That's from Wellness Fitness Junk, Junkie 101. Um, I do, I actually do have a pre-game routine. Um, it's not really like anything crazy or anything like that, but it's more so I get really zen um, and I just focus. I, I basically write down everything that I'm going to do, ingredients, methods, um, what sort of equipment I'm going to need, and I break it down per minute and per second. So if I have an hour to cook, I'm literally writing down 60, 55, 50, 45, 40, and then in between I'm writing exactly what I need to do, whether it's simply as run, get ingredients. Um, you know, put things in a pan, heat pan. I'll put all these in these time slots and that keeps me on track and it allows me to also gauge um, how much time I need for whatever I'm going to do. And if sometimes I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm faster here, then I can move some time over there and do something else on that side. Next is... Um, Uh, this is not really pertaining to the episode, but it's also be about, you know, Top Chef, about sh uh, about being a chef in general. Um, this is from Jetty Lee, uh, shout out Jetty, and she's like, if you could have done anything else but become a chef and a gym rat, LOL, what would you have liked to pursue instead? 
Um, for reals, the truth, matter of fact, is that uh, growing up, I always wanted to be an NBA basketball player. Um, that's still the goal. I swear, if an NBA contract comes my way, I'll take it. But yeah, that was like the dream, dream career. Um, but yeah, but besides that, still, you know, doing the gym thing now, doing the cooking thing, doing the six pack chef thing. Can't complain. Um, Kirby Chef 84, when are you coming to Australia? Uh, Team Wallace, well, thanks so much for um, the support all the way from Down Under over there. Um, I'm coming whenever you tell me to come, Chef. Really, that's it. Um, all right, another one. Um, JM Vung, she says, I know there's only four chefs cooking at a time, so where are you and the other competitors during that time? Well, we're hidden away. We can't see what they're cooking. We don't know the kitchen. Everybody is equally fair. Um, yeah, so that's the answer for that one. Um, my Food Nation asks, did you have a repertoire of dishes to cook already in mind before the competition? I always wonder how chefs whip up these amazing plates on the fly. So uh, I'm gonna answer it in two ways. So the first way is if you're on Top Chef, you've probably cooked for a while, you know how to cook, you've cooked recipes before. So that technically is your repertoire. That's one of the reasons why you're actually on the show in the first place. Now, for myself, I came in here with not recipes. So I, I personally don't cook with recipes. I call myself sort of um, a freestyle chef, if you will, which means that I don't cook with recipes. I sort of just go with what's there, what's on the flow. Um, I'll sort of combine things here and there, taste, does it work, does it not work. So I mix and match cuisines and cultures and techniques. And that's sort of how I go into the competition. And that's really how I cook on a daily basis. Um, blue too. Why congee out of all the other traditional dishes your grandparents passed down or made? Um, honestly, that was the first dish or the first recipe that came up to mind when um, when Eden and Mark explained our challenge. It was about family, it was about giving a family recipe that was passed down, and right away I thought of childhood, I thought of being sick, I thought of, you know, Saturday, Sundays, having congee lunches and making dumplings. And then I was really trying to decide on creating which recipe that would I could be able to elevate, I would have a story behind it, and congee was the thing. Um, and yeah, so that's why I chose kanji. Let's see, anything else? Um, Lisa Tomlinson 5. Amazing job, thank you, thank you. Um, how many episodes have you taped so far? I've taped one so far. Um, and that's really just the question, cool. Um, do you already know the results if you've already, if you filmed this ahead of time? I cannot answer that, and I don't know. Now, I think I'm gonna, I think that's all for Instagram, and I'm gonna head over to Facebook, and I'm gonna check some questions there, so bear with me as I just log in. All right, um, here we go. Ricky Tran, Ricky Tran, he asks, how did you come up with the kanji dish? So, why I chose the kanji dish that was asked earlier was simply because that was the first recipe that it came to mind, um, that I thought I could really take it and create a story and create a, and create a really amazing dish out of that. And why did I come up with that kanji dish? Well, the reason is kanji was something that I thought represented my family, represented my culture. Um, it was something that it's a humbling dish that it's also a plain vessel. So I could do anything that I wanted with it. Um, and it's a lot of seafood based. It's a lot very seafood, umami heavy base that I put into this recipe because um, my grandfather used to work on a boat. He was a fisherman. He and my family doesn't eat a lot of meat. So seafood was always something that we had all the time and very abundant. And that's why I created the base out of the kanji um, using the seafood. And then the family stuff of things like the egg yolks are things that I love to eat. Um, my dad loves peanuts. Um, my mom loves crispy things, so the so the shall uh, the scallops were there, um, pickles and turnips, my kind of thing. Um, my grandmother loves sort of mixing and playing and having unique stuff, so being able to have those different components was sort of a mosh to that. Um, 
halibut cheek, the crab, um, the nori and the, and the kanji. That was all just entirely about our family being able to just always um, have seafood in our house. So that's sort of where these bits and pieces of the recipe came to be. And then I sort of just bring it together, uh, sort of envision that and then bring it up together. Next one was another question by Ricky, which is, what's the inspiration for you to get on Top Chef? So, the reason that I got Top Chef was, Top Chef is the best show to gauge and to sh prove yourself in regards to how good you are as a chef. How good are you as the career that you've chosen? And there's no better one than Top Chef. It's literally the best of the best in the country. Um, it's not like home cooks, it's not amateur cooks, it's not like a regular cook. These are legit chefs. These are chefs that worked with Michelin stars, uh, culinary temples, um, people that I look up to and really just run the culinary world in Canada. So I wanted to prove to myself and to prove to everybody else that A, I'm just as great a chef as anybody else regardless if I work in a restaurant or not and B, um, I'm competitive as hell. What else was another inspiration was the prize money. It's a hundred thousand dollars, you know, a trip to Italy, a new kitchen, all these things. And a big also inspiration was the fact of why not? Why can't I go on it? Um, why can't I be Top Chef Canada? And that really inspires me when I have to ask myself why not? And if I have to regret or question, then that for me is a big, um, big indication of you gotta go for it, gotta make it happen. There's nothing to lose. Um, next question is from Sandy Anderson. How do you keep track of time in a challenge and to not burn, drop, forget anything when you get interrupted? Um, great question. How do I keep track of time? Well, in the kitchen, we do have a timer. Where, you know, if, if when you watch the episode, if you watch it back, and even just past episodes of Top Chef, they always have um, a kitchen timer, and also chefs are always screaming, saying, you know, how much time left? What's the time? Um, counting down. So that's how we sort of keep track. And once again, I answered earlier, I always write down, um, and I break down the amount of the work that I have to do in the amount of time. So even based on how much I've done, on my mise en place, on my prep list, then I sort of have a gauge of the time frame, And how to not burn, drop, or forget anything. Um, that's just part of the game. It's Being a chef is really about a lot of organization. Um, people sort of underestimate that, but a great chef is always organized. They know exactly where everything is. And especially for something like myself, if I, um, have, if I set up a station, I can close my eyes and be able to tell where this ingredient is there, where this equipment is this, or where t this tool is at, so that if anything ever happens, I know where to grab ASAP. Um, a little harder on Top Chef, because obviously, new kitchen, you can't go in and set up, and you just do your best. Um, next one. Um, Sandy asks, how do you get the recipe for that kanji dish? Um, because I, I would murder someone for it. Well, first off, don't murder anybody. Um, don't need to die over this. Uh, second of all, I really don't know because I don't cook off recipes. Um, literally, I just make it fresh off my head um, and just go with it. I, if I really, if if I really put the time aside and if a lot of people want it, I could just you know simply just make the dish again and then write it down as I make it and just through taste, I'll be able to figure that out. So that's the answer to that. Um, Jenny Tai asks, what were your initial thoughts going into this competition? How was your past experience prepared you for this competition? How much more challenging do you find Top Chef Canada compared to Chop Canada? Um, how nervous were you after meeting the other contenders? What were your feelings being called first to see the judges? How did you feel after the announced after they announced the good news? How do you feel about being the youngest contestant on the show this season? Um, congrats again, so I'm pumped for the next episode. Well, first off, Jenny, Incredible questions, thanks a lot. Um, there's a lot of them, I'm not gonna answer all of them. Um, I'm gonna pick and choose. Um, so let's see, I've answered a couple of them earlier, but um, how much more challenging do you think Top, do you find Top Chef Canada compared to Chop Canada? It is literally like night and day. I would, I would say that the reason is because Top Chef Canada is legit the top chefs. There's only 
or there's only, we started with 14, but 12 was only making it in here. So there's only 12 out of the entire country, whereas Chopped, um, it's, you can have different chefs every week. It's a weekly different rotation of chefs. Here it's just 12 chefs, last one standing, and compared to Chopped where not you don't have to be the best of the best to be on that show, Top Chef Canada is the pinnacle. It is the show. So compared to Chopped Canada, Top Chef Canada is insane. Um, how nervous were you meeting the other contenders? Super nervous, In insanely nervous. I freaking hate trying to, I hate comparing myself to people because I do it often and I don't like it. Um, it gets me in a like sort of a negative, anxious, scared, worried phase that I start thinking, worrying about other people and I should just be worrying about myself. Um, but yeah, it's super nervous, uh, nerve wracking, sorry, to, to meet these guys because I know for a fact that none of these guys are be chumps. Um, all the chefs there are insanely talented and they wouldn't be there if they weren't. So nervous, absolutely. Next question. Um, how did, oh, this was, this was the best. I think this one might, this one, by the way, might be my favorite question. So um, Jenny Tai, you are gonna be getting um, the new six pack chef, a cut above t-shirt. I'll message you later or if you see me, give me a DM. Um, but this question I really enjoy. Um, what was your feelings being called first to see the judges and how did you feel after, the, after they announced the good news? There is no scarier part that I think that I experienced so far on Top Chef is being in front of those judges. Mark, Mijun, Eden, Chris, Janet, like you're standing in the middle of the room and you're looking at them and they're just glaring at you with these fearful, obviously they're judges, so judgmental eyes and like these guys are, they can make or break you, they can send you home and it's not like they tell you if, you, if you're the best or the worst right away, you don't know. Like if you watch past uh, seasons of Tasha Canada, um, sometimes they announce the worst chefs first. So it's literally like, you start questioning. I remember standing there waiting for them to say whatever they're going to say. And I'm like, did I, did I really, am I going home? Like, there's no way I can go home. I'm like, I understand. I start questioning like my dish. Like, I'm like, it was my dish too easy. Was it too simple? Um, it's kanji. Everybody else made these like composed, like really nice restaurant dishes. Um, and you start just questioning and it gets really, really nerve wracking. Um, I start, yeah, it's it's a horrible feeling to be out there. Um, but until they announce that you're the best um, dishes um, or the top dishes, then you're. like it's the biggest relief ever it's just this like weight totally off you're like oh, thank god because there's so many things you're like a we're the best out of out of this challenge uh, b we get to go get to survive another episode and we have a possible chance of winning whatever the gift um winning the trip to the behringer wines so it was it was amazing, it, but it was like this super roller coaster of like, I don't know what's happening. I could go home and suddenly this super crazy high. Um, yeah, it's it's insane. It's literally, I think, if I ask any person um, or any chef that's ever been on Top Chef of the past seven seasons, six seasons, and our seven, our season number seven, everyone I probably would think would say, I can bet you that standing in, in that judge's table, in front of that judge's table is just horrifying. Um, let's see. Um, how do you feel about being the youngest contestant? It feels good. It feels, it feels like I'm sort of the underdog, but it's also really cool because I get to showcase um, something. I have nothing to prove, but everything to prove at the same time. Um, I like it. I like it like that. Um, it, but it's also, it's a big respect that I give to the chefs when I'm the youngest guy because I go in there and I know for a fact 
that all these people have cooked for so long, so much longer, so much more hours. And as a chef, one of the, it's almost one of those things where like the more you cook, the better you are just because reputation, you're faster, you're quicker. Um, so yeah. Um, last question. And this one is from Abdullah, Abdullah Chowdhury. Um, first congrats, second pumped for the next episode. And third, what brand of knives do you use? All right. Um, great question too. Um, I, I, I like it so much. I, I want to give you another, I want to give away another shirt, but, um, yeah, I'm not going to cause I, I promise Jenny I will. So, um, sorry, Abdullah, maybe next time. Um, so what brand of knives do you use? I use a variety of knives, but my main go-to like go-to knives are actually the Shun brands. Um, they're not crazy expensive. They are great looking. Um, I, I like the Damascus on them. I like how they feel. I like the weight on them. I'm a big fan of knives that are not super heavy compared to like maybe the German knives like a Wusthof or a Henkel or something like that. I like knives that are light. Um, the, uh, the only problem with the Shuns is that they don't stay crazy sharp too fast. Um, I mean too long, sorry. So I do got to constantly sharpen them like, you know, every um, every every one or two weeks, but that's also depending how much you're using the knife. Um, but they're amazing. They're amazing. They they're really they're good for the price. They're good value. They're good quality. Um, they look great. Um, but I have those knives, and then I also have um, my Japanese knives. So um, these are knives that I sort of I would I use more so in a restaurant setting or if I'm doing an event, something where I can really control. Um, the environment because I just don't want to wreck those knives. Um, those those knives you just need finesse. You need time. You need to be able to take care of them. So like every slice you clean it off. Every slice you clean it off. You put it away. You make sure it's dry. Um, and and on Top Chef, there's definitely no time for that. So I didn't get to use those, but I did uh, did bring them. Um, Japanese knives. Um, I got those um, in Japan. You can also get those down in Toronto. Um, different stores have them, but I like to go to Tosho Knife Arts. Um, that's usually where I get a lot of my knives. And also, that's where I got um, my two custom knives. So they're sort of my pride, my babies. I actually don't use them often either because they're just that special to me. Um, so they're custom. I made, I chose everything from the handle to the blade to the color uh, to the type of steel to the bevel. Um, to the design. So for me, um, there's, I can't remember the brand for that one, but those are those are my custom Japanese knives. Um, and they got another just more generic Japanese knives. And then I've got my shun. So those are the brands that I use. So, all right guys, that is it. Thank you guys for all the questions. Hope I answered them. Um, there's a couple that I couldn't answer just due to um, contracts and due to being on TV, things like that. Um, but please feel free, message me, hit me up on my social media, um, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, my own website, sixpackchef.com, uh, cop a shirt, six pack chef, a cut above t-shirts. These are really, really comfy. But until then, thanks for your answers. Tune in, episode two airs Monday, 10 p.m. on foodnetwork.ca and on Food Network Canada. Peace out.